Today we're going to be replacing the alternator on this Honda Accord. It's a 2020 Honda Accord, four-cylinder, 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. Now, before we get into replacing this alternator, though, I want to talk a little bit about LIN-controlled alternators and LIN communication networks. So most modern vehicles these days have communication networks on them. In fact, they can have several different communication networks on them. And these communication networks allow different modules, different computers to communicate with and control various components on the vehicle. They can share data, share information with one another, and like I said, control the engine, control the transmission, control the ABS brake system, uh, even control a lot of the ADOS applications that are on modern vehicles. So communication networks are very, very important and very critical on modern vehicles. And LIN, or Local Interconnect Network, is a type of communication network that's used on many modern vehicles. In the past, it's been mostly used for controlling various convenience features and functions on vehicles. Okay, things like power windows, power seats, heated seats, uh, power sunroofs, power trunk releases. Okay, things that are, like I said, are convenience features, convenience functions, and, and, and those types of uh, features on vehicles. Uh, all of the high priority systems, controlling the engine, controlling the transmission, the ABS brake system, uh, controlling the instrument cluster, uh, controlling uh, various ADOS applications, safety features on vehicles. All of those types of things are typically controlled over a CAN network on a vehicle, uh, a network that is able to allow many modules to communicate with one another, can share a lot of data, and really communicates at a pretty high rate of speed. So the LIN network is a, is a smaller network that communicates at much lower speeds than a typical CAN network will. It doesn't have to share data as fast, doesn't have to share as much data as necessary on a, on a CAN network. So the LIN networks have become very, very popular on late model vehicles, and they can use them to control some of these, in most cases, convenience-related functions, convenience systems, things that don't require a lot of data and don't have to communicate at really, really high rates of speed. Now, the other thing that's happened, though, is that a lot of car manufacturers have gone to controlling the alternator and the charging system over one of these LIN networks, over one of these LIN single-wire communication networks. Uh, they've been very, very popular on a lot of European vehicles. They're very, very common and popular on many of the Asian vehicles. Uh, they are used even on a few Ford applications here and there. There's a couple of things to keep in mind whenever you're working on a vehicle that has a LIN-controlled alternator. There's some key things that you want to be aware of that will help you diagnose and test the system uh, that we want to mention before we get started here. Uh, first off, of course, just like with any charging system problem on a vehicle, you want to make sure that you test the battery properly that it's the correct battery for the vehicle, it's the correct type of battery, it has the correct rating or capacity for that vehicle, whether it's rated in amp hours or cold cranking amps, has to be the right battery for that vehicle. You want to test it to make sure it's fully charged. You want to test the overall state of health of the battery, either with a conductance type tester or a load type tester. So we've got to make sure we've got a good battery. You want to check all the various electrical connections on the vehicle, at the battery, the battery cables, the connections on the alternator itself. Make sure those are tight, secure, there's no damaged wiring, there's no wiring that's frayed or evidence of overheating. You've got to make sure all that stuff's in good condition. Obviously, the belt, again, just like on any charging system, we want to make sure the, the drive belt for the alternator is in good condition, it's tensioned properly. So those things still apply to LIN-communicated and LIN-controlled alternators on vehicles. We've still got to test those things. But something else that's also important uh, and will help you uh, to diagnose and test and troubleshoot a LIN-controlled alternator would be an updated professional bi-directional type scan tool. This will allow you to access fault codes so when an alternator fails on a LIN-controlled system, uh, in many cases the PCM which controls that alternator will recognize a fault in that system. It may recognize a fault in the, in the LIN network, for example, the wire that communicates between the alternator and the PCM. It may recognize that there's a fault in that circuit and it'll store a fault code in there that you can access with that scan tool to help lead you in the right direction or lead you down the right path as to what might be the problem. It may not necessarily be the alternator itself, but there may be a problem in that LIN circuit. Okay? Uh, most LIN-controlled charging systems and LIN-controlled alternators will have a battery current sensor mounted on the battery, and that allows the PCM to determine the state of charge of that battery, the temperature of that battery, the overall state of health of that battery. So there could be problems with that sensor, and the PCM can't not identify when that battery is fully charged or whether that battery has a problem or not. And you, again, you may be able to access fault codes that'll tell you there's a problem with the battery current sensor on the vehicle. 
So the use of a scan tool is very important, almost essential, when it comes to diagnosing and troubleshooting LIN-controlled alternators. There's various data parameters that you can look at, again, to help determine whether that LIN-controlled alternator is functioning properly or not, whether the PCM is able to control it properly or not. Something else that's important to keep in mind, too, is that anytime you're testing really any charging system, uh, there's some key steps that you want to make sure you follow, some key things that you want to make sure you do in order to ensure you're properly testing that charging system on that, on that vehicle. And this is especially true with these LIN-controlled alternators. So number one, you want to make sure that you're not testing it at idle, that you get the engine RPM you know, somewhere between 1,500, 1,800, 2,000 RPM. Best to check with the vehicle manufacturer's service information to see what they recommend as far as what RPM level you should test that charging system at. But typically, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 RPM. It's also important to turn on some electrical loads to create some electrical demand on that vehicle, again, to help test that LIN-controlled alternator effectively. So typically what we recommend and suggest is that you turn the headlights on with the high beams on, turn the rear defroster on, maybe turn the blower speed on high or maximum, okay? Creating that electrical load will cause the PCM to command that alternator to charge at a higher level. Therefore, you can test it more effectively and more accurately and more precisely. One of the key things about many of these LIN-controlled alternators is that if the PCM is able to determine that the battery has a full state of charge and there is very, very low electrical load, then it isn't necessary to have that alternator charging at a very high level. So it will actually command that alternator to charge at a much lower level. And this can sometimes mislead you into thinking you have a charging system problem, that the alternator is not charging properly enough. When it's sitting there at idle with no electrical loads, the PCM, again, may command that alternator to charge at a much lower level, which leads to misdiagnosis and unnecessary, in some cases, alternator replacement. So by getting it off idle, getting the engine RPM up there, 15, 1800, 2000 RPM, somewhere in that range, by applying some electrical load, turning on the headlights and the high beams and the rear defroster, turning the blower speed on high, you'll cause that PCM, in this case, to command that LIN control alternator to charge at a higher level, and you'll be able to test it more accurately and more precisely. So keep those things in mind anytime you're doing a basic charging system test on any vehicle that has a LIN controlled alternator.